good morning dear students so we are still in the hand complex so today we will discuss about the next joint after completing the metacarpophalangeal joint we are starting the interphalangeal joints so so today's class we will be discussing about the introduction and the basic anatomical structure ligaments and range of motion available in the interphalangeal joint so the picture as you can see shows clearly the two interphalangeal joints so this is the proximal phalanx which is uh, written as p1 phalanx number one the middle phalanx that is the p2 and the distal phalanx p3 so essentially we have two uh, interphalangeal joints one is proximal one is distal so the proximal interphalangeal joint as you can clearly see is formed by the distal end of the proximal phalanx and the base of the middle phalanx and uh, same way the distal interphalangeal joint is formed by the distal end of the middle phalanx and the base of the the this uh, the what we call as the uh, uh, distal phalanx so so it's very simple there is no complication and you can see here this is also a synovial joint because it has a joint capsule and then you can see the collateral ligaments same way we had in the mcp joint also so there is radial that is what here we call it as mostly medial and lateral collateral ligaments same way as we had in the mcp joint here also we have volar plates both in the proximal interphalangeal joints as well as the distal interphalangeal joint so we can say that <coughs> each of the proximal interphalangeal and distal interphalangeal joints of the fingers is composed of the head of the phalanx and the base of the phalanx distal to it each interphalangeal joint is a true synovial hinge joint with one degree of freedom it is a true synovial hinge joint hinge means in malayalam what we call is vijavari you know that how on which the door opens yes so with one degree of freedom so hinge joint pure true hinge joint will have only one uh, axial movement one axis and one uh, range of motion so uh, plane of motion so here the plane of motion what we have is flexion extension of the ip joints and the joint capsule is present with a volar plate and two collateral ligaments so it's a very simple uh, joint as we as far as the joint is concerned uh, the uh, the joint is a true synovial hinge joint with one degree of freedom which is flexion and extension a joint capsule with synovial joint capsule a volar plate and two collateral ligaments okay so we'll go to the next slide so can, so continuation of the interphalangeal joints the base of each middle and the distal phalanx has two shallow concave facets naturally because the here we are talking about the base of the middle and the distal <coughs> so now so it is attaching to the convex shaped head so pulley shaped head of the phalanx proximal to it so the distal phalanx sits on the pulley shaped head of the phalanx proximal to it so the convex pulley shaped phalanx uh, the proximal phalanx will be at uh, you know joining to the shallow concave facet facet with a central ridge the joint structure is similar to that of the metacarpophalangeal joint in that the proximal articular surface is larger than the distal articular surface the only difference you can uh, see basically between the mcp joints and the ip joints is only that the in the mcp the metacarpal head will be larger and the uh, you know there is a post the, because of the larger head as you have seen in the last class understood in the last class the the range of motion will increase because of the large head which gives 380 degrees of surface area so here the joint structure is similar to that of the metacarpophalangeal joint 
in that the proximal articular surface is larger than the distal articular surface. The only difference is that. Unlike the MP MCP joints, there is little posterior articular surface at the PAP or DIP joint. So, posterior articular surface is not there, uh, not available in the PAP, that is the proximal interphalangeal and the distal interphalangeal joint. And therefore, little hyperextension that so when there is no posterior what we call as dorsal area a range of motion is not possible there is no articular surface means there is no movement possible so there is no movement possible means that the range of motion is the so what is the range of what is the action in the posterior when the the phalanx moves posterior this extension right so here we call it as hyperextension so there is no or little there is basically for males there is no hyperextension possible in the pap and dip for females because of the lax ligaments some mild passive hyperextension is possible so dip joint uh, and has no has some passive hyperextension but uh, uh, the pap joint has essentially none of it most for most of the individual the proximal interphalangeal joint as well as the distal interphalangeal joint does not have any hyperextension so flexion extension is there but there is no hyperextension why because there is no posterior articular surface in the I, both ip joints so passive hyperextension some range differ from people to people only available in the dip the distal interphalangeal joints so interphalangeal joints the what we see is now we'll come to the volar plates the volar plate similarly in the mcp has uh, attaching to the joint capsule blending to the joint capsule and the, so because of that what will happen it will in, enhance the stability and also it will limit hyperextension same way in the mcp the action is similar of that of mcp the volar plates are very, very essential for enhancing joint stability and limiting hyperextension the plates at the interphalangeal joints are structurally st structurally and functionally identical so both anatomically and physiologically that means structurally and functionally identical to that of the mcp joint except that the plates are not connected by a tre deep transverse ligament so mcp we have a deep transverse ligament to why do we have that ligament so that the mcp jo mcp joints all the four mcp joints are they cannot get, go away from each other so the stability so the even those mild movement are there passive you know movements are the lateral movements are there but, but because of the deep transverse ligament in the mcp joint the the all the metaphor metacorpal heads are you know attached together they cannot move away like the fingers like adduction and abduction possible in the fingers mcp cannot do that but here because we don't have a tran deep transverse ligament in the ip joints there is no need for that because the fingers have to move separately so that is the only difference in the volar plate of mcp the plate is also attached to the transverse ligament like you saw and also to the sagittal band, band when it comes dorsally in attaching to the extends the last class we have seen that but here it is not there so volar, volar plate is only attached to the capsule and then it gives stability and limits uh, hyper extension fisher and associates found fibrocartilage projections from the extensor mechanism so uh, other structure they saw is from the extensor mechanism of the tendons extensor tendons the volar plate so there is a fibrocartilaginous projection and then we have the volar plate and then the collateral ligaments attaches to the which the collateral ligament attaches to the basis of the phalanx phalanges at both the p proximal interphalange joint and the distal interphalange joint so when you think about the ip joints we have to remember that according to fishers there is also a fibrocartilage projections from the extensor mechanism otherwise we have two collateral ligaments medial lateral collateral ligaments and then you have the volar plate and so we have a joint capsule and the joint variety is a synovial pure hinge variety two uh, degrees of uh, one degree of freedom that is uh, you know we get flexion and extension hyper extension only mildly possible in the dip 
but no eye protection possible in the PAP and the stability is provided by this collateral ligament complex so we have a collateral ligament same like other joints MCP joints here also we have medial and lateral collateral ligament co uh, uh, this, this complex which provides support throughout the PAP and TAP joint motion so they have a very very important role to play because they uh, have to stabilize the fingers right fingers do not have any uh, you know deep transverse metacarpal no ligaments such as that. so the collateral ligaments are the ligaments which are going to give the stability for the ip joints uh, Zwerski and colleagues found the lateral collateral ligament so so many studies have been done and they found that the lateral collateral ligament of the index finger is the strongest of the proximal interphalangeal collateral ligaments so we have medial and lateral collateral ligaments of for each fingers for each four fingers we have the medial and lateral collateral ligament but according to Zwerski and colleagues when they did a study and they found that the lateral ligament of the lateral collateral ligament of the index finger is the strongest whereas the fifth PAP joint that is a little fingers PAP joint is the weakest collateral ligament and when you touch now if you touch your finger uh, see the uh, lateral collateral ligament try to uh, twist your uh, you know the uh, middle phalanx away from the it's not possible with it but when you do that in the little finger you can feel that it's slightly not that stronger like the index finger even the even the bone phalanx itself is not so large like the uh, uh, the little finger right so each PAP that is proximal interphalangeal joint and the DAP joints have a medial and lateral collateral ligament the range of the total range of flexion now what what else we have to know now now we have to understand what how much range of flexion and extension is available so we can say that in the index finger is a greater so available range for the PAP joint is the highest where in the index finger at the 100 to 100 110 degrees of flexion so flexion extension the range is 100 and 110 degrees that is more than 90 degrees at the PAP joint where in which uh, uh, joint uh, the finger that is index finger so index finger it's already the collateral ligament the lateral collateral ligament of the index finger is the strongest and the ranges of motion of flexion extension is maximum for which PAP joint index finger PAP joint so but there is a variation between the uh, range of motion for PAP and DAP for the index finger the PAP range of motion is 100 to 110 degree but DAP joint motion is less than 90 degree that is all they are given 80 degree the ranges of PAP and DAP flexion at each finger increases ulnarly with the fifth PAP and DAP joints achieving 135 to 90 degrees respectively so the range of motion for index finger is uh, same way the flexion uh, extension range for the PAP is more uh, than the DAP for index finger but when it comes towards ulnarly because of the the free ligaments the ligaments are not stronger and because of that the range of motion increases towards medially maximum achieving not very big variation but mild variation from 100 to 110 it was in the index finger here it is 135 degrees and there it was 80 now here the the the, the uh, little finger fingers uh, DAP and PAP will almost uh, uh, PAP is 135 degree flexion and DAP will reach 90 degrees respectively the pattern of increasing flexion extension range of motion from the radial and ulnar side of the hand is consistent at the so same way so there is no big difference it is similar to that of the CMC joint last class if you remember we saw a figure showing angulation increasing from uh, from towards the ulnarly the increase of the, that's why the fist is going to show that shape you know same way so the additional range allocated to the more ulnarly allocated fingers results in the angulation of fingers towards the scaphoid and facilitates opposition of fingers with the thumb so this variation when you try to flex like this you see that this variation the range of motion 
of the PAP joined also.